Hey guys, it's Alicia Pate from Pate Ranch and the Laser Lounge on Facebook. I'm coming at you today to show you a video on how I laser cut foam for several projects, specifically for a party planner. So the first question is, yes, you can laser cut foam board. I'm going to show you what you need to look for and a couple of places where you can buy it. The other thing I'm going to show you in this beginning to end video today is how to cut it with the cut settings how to prepare it, that means painting, how to glue it, how to assemble it up. And then finally, I'm going to show you how I package my foam board projects to hand deliver or to ship to a client. So sit back and watch this short video on how to laser and cut and score foam board for projects. The first question I always get is, can you use your laser machine to cut foam? You sure can. You can see in this illustration, they've cut foam here to use to put down holders for certain items like a pen or a notepad. You've probably seen that with certain things that you've purchased and they have those special packaging materials. So in this illustration, you can see that they're cutting polyester, polyethylene, and polyurethane type foams. For all the projects that I do with foam board, I use a product called Polystrain. It's that thick foam board that has almost that hard paper on the front and the back. And that's what I use in all of my jobs. People ask, where do I get it? Myself, I buy most of my supplies from Uline. If we look at the Uline website, they have many options for foam core boards. I use the item on the top left, the foam core board by Uline. That's worked best for me. There's also an option to get gator foam board, which is in the upper right. That's for more professional jobs where you really want it to last a little, little bit longer. It is more expensive, but it has a lengthier stay. Let's look a little bit deeper into the specs. I end up buying the 40 by 60 sheets. You can get them in different thicknesses. You can see here there's 1 8, 3 16 and 1 half. I get the half inch and I get the 40 by 60 because it accommodates well in my bed. I'm running the Thunder 63, which is a 63 inch by 40 bed for all of my jobs. So I have ordered my foam from Uline in bulk quantity. There is a freight shipping charge once you get over a certain size box, depending on what you order. I know some people get sticker shocked by the additional anywhere from two to 300 because it is being delivered by a shipping truck. But what I'll say is you'll more than make your money back on doing two or three jobs with this foam. You can also get smaller quantities or you can find it in some of your local areas where you can get foam board. If we look specifically at the product that I ordered, take note of the material. It is polystrene, so it's laserable. I like the 40 by 60 sheets, as I said before, and each sheet sells for about $20. I try to order in bulk, that way I have a lot on hand and I only have to worry about one delivery fee. So this project today is going to cover three actual signs. This is the largest sign. This was for a wedding. This sign is 55 by 40 inches. It needed to be ultra lightweight so it could hang on this greenery wall and not have a lot of sag. That's one of the main requirements for using foam boards. The second piece of the job was to make two identical pieces like you see here, and these were 28 by 36. So essentially it was taking that inside monogram that you saw from the first board, but cutting two of those that would stand alone by themselves on the greenery. Again, this was done out of half inch foam board that I got from Uline. So the prior picture was also half inch foam board double layered. All right, let's take a look at the first job. So this is the big one with the white backer. So you can see up in the cut layer settings, we're gonna do foam board and score. I always like to do an in inset for scoring. That way I know exactly where to put my cutout. So you always move it in a little bit so you don't show that. And then you're going to see the outer part, which is the purple, and that's the foam board setting. So I use 25 and 34 as my settings. Adjust that based on your needs. Mine is a Thunder 63 130 watt machine that I'm running this on. We do a frame. I've sped it up a little bit here. It's not that fast, but I wanted to make sure everything was in proportion and stayed within the bed. So you can see that we do. All right, this is the end of the first two jobs. So we did a score and then we did a cut. And so I'm gonna remove the laser head and then I'm gonna remove this item because this is gonna be the backer for our first big sign. All right, remember we need to do three cutouts of this. One will go on the backer board, the white one, and then two of these will stand alone on green walls. So we gotta cut three in total. 
Here are my settings for this. Again, my speed for 130 watt Thunder 63 is 25 and my power is 34. Here's a clip, a video actually, of the actual cut job at while it's running. I know a lot of people will say, oh, I heard that there's, you know, you can get flash fires, etc., with cutting foam board. As you can see in this demonstration, you don't. Always never walk away from your laser. Always stay with it and watch it. But you do not get that flash that everyone's talking about. All right, so now our job is done, and we need to remove the little pieces that we don't want to keep. So we lift up the base and start picking through. Every once in a while, you might have a hanging chad, and I'm going to show you how to get those off. But you can see here from the illustration, we had a really nice cut. I like to use the half inch board just because it has a lot more stability. These look good and I'm happy with my results. I want to show you a what if you don't get through the board as clean as you thought. This is a picture of one of the pieces flipped over where I just didn't get as good of a job cut just because I was further away from the laser tube itself. Take a small X-Acto knife and just cut along the back of those seams and it's easy to go ahead and break it apart. Several people have asked me, what do the sides look like? This is an example of what you'll see. You'll see a little bit of brown from the laser, but the foam stays pretty intact. It's maybe one twelfth of an inch indented, but you don't even see it. And I'm going to show you how to paint it. One thing I like to do with all of my foam boards is use clear acrylic and create the hangers for them. So I just go into light burn and I create a square or a rectangle and then a, a circle with a hole in it and I unite those. And then I cut those out on the laser, just like you see here. And we'll peel off the paper and use those to hang the boards. Now the fun part begins, the painting. I'm going to use two different kinds today. I'm going to do the base with the metallic that you see on the right. And then I'm going to hit it with a little glitter blast that you see on the left. All right, this next clip is going to, I'm going to let it run in actual speed because I want you to see how slow I'm painting this. I'm using a, a light motion with very light sprays. You don't want to go super heavy and thick on foam board. Why? Because, think about it, you're putting a water substance on a piece of paper. Because on the top of the foam board is a light piece of, or actually it's a heavy piece of cardstock. So you want to do light sprays, light repetitive sprays. And you'll notice that I'm hitting areas, going somewhere else, and coming back. That's really the pattern that you want until you can get that complete consistency that you're happy with. You'll notice that I'm not getting real close either. And while I'm coming at an angle, it's like a 30 to 45 degree angle, the sides are getting coated as well. One thing tricky about foam, foam board is that the sides, if you get too much spray paint on them, it'll eat the foam. So you want to go in very light coats on the top and the side. See me hitting it at the angle? That's how you get the sides. You do not, I will repeat, don't go heavy on the sides or it'll eat that foam up and then you'll see an indention. And you really don't have to go heavy on the side to give it a little bit of that accent color. It'll blend nicely if you just give it a nice, nice soft touch on the side. Here's a look at our final product. We did three of these. Now we gotta assemble them together. The first one we're going to do is the one with the white backer board. You can see I just laid over the, the front piece, over the score lines, and because I did that inset, you can't see the score lines. So now we just have to glue it. My preference for glue for, for items like this is Loctite 60 second glue, but you can use whatever clear glue that you want to use. I just like to be able to have a few seconds to be able to move it around if I need to replace it. Let's take a look at the sides of the foam. Remember we did light sprays. It still gives it a nice accent color that fits in well, but hasn't made the foam deform because we over caked it. So just keep that in mind. It'll still look great. Just don't overdo it on the sides. Now we need to work on how we're gonna hang this thing. I used to put holes in it, but now I use little acrylic holders like this with CA glue. If you haven't ever used CA glue, it's really nice. You have one solution that's like 
you put on whatever you need to and then there's a spray that's an activator once I spray this on the other part of the item and then I stick them together it's not moving it's like an instant stick glue so be ready for it to stay where you're going but it's a great application for something like this that you want to hold really strong Now we have our final product of the first sign. It's got the hangers on it that are clear so you won't see them. And it's ready to go. Here's a final look at our three signs that need to go to a wedding. For the two individual ones that didn't have a backer, I just wrapped them together and I used an old piece of plywood that I used for cutouts for other projects. The big one, I used wrapping paper, moving paper, and folded it over so that it was protected and not wouldn't take on any dirt. You can see a picture of how I assembled it here. And lastly, we got some photos sent to us from the party planner. You can see one of the two that had no backer on it hanging on a green wall. And the next one you'll see is the large one. Again, 55 by 40 that's hanging on the backdrop behind the band. This was a great project that I really enjoyed and I hope you enjoyed the instruction. Again, I hope you enjoyed this instructional video on how to laser cut foam board from beginning to end. We have many videos like this and more that you can learn from us in the Laser Lounge. So please come join us and learn about new things and new projects from beginning to end.